Today we're comparing the most popular Class A gas mid-level motorhomes. Yeah. This is perfect for the person that's looking for a little more luxury but without stepping up to a diesel. Now there's a lot of features that are overlapping or similar between these coaches, so we've selected our top three favorite and least favorite features about each coach. And each coach is going to get a thumbs up or a thumbs down rating at the end. So let's get started. Okay. So we're here at Mike Thompson's RV in Colton, California. Where they have two of our contenders. Starting with our likes, Multiplex. If you haven't seen this before, it's pretty cool. You can actually control multiple lights from one area and the buttons are actually labeled so it's easy to see what's going on. So for instance, main ceiling lights off. Hall lights off. It's kind of an interesting way to do it, and also this nice little feature here for my gray, fresh, and black. It's all controlled right here. I like it. I like this nice upgraded faucet. It's nice and sturdy, it looks nice, and it's tall enough so I can actually wash dishes in this sink. So I'm a big fan of these doors. They're solid, they're well built, they feel really nice, and they're extremely adjustable, and they shut so nicely. Moving on to our dislikes. My number one is the awning placement. The awning arm is right through the middle of the window. So not only does it look strange, it cuts through your view when you're sitting there as well. One of my least favorite things about this coach is the electrical system. They use an off-brand inverter. They use really thin gauge wiring and there's very few outlets installed that actually run off of the inverter. So if you're gonna plan on boondocking or you plan on adding solar, you might have to replace pretty much the majority of the electrical system in here. The other downside for me in this coach is the refrigerator. Because it's placed up high, it's gonna be really hard for me to get to anything on this top shelf. So to sum up our likes, we have the multiplex switches, the nice faucet inside the kitchen, and the quality bay doors. Yes, and the dislikes were the refrigerator that's too tall, the awkward awning arm placement across the window, and the electrical system. So overall, we give this coach two thumbs, two thumbs up. up. Starting with our faves, the layout is one of my tops in this coach because of the L-shaped sofa. It provides a lot of seating and I have a nice direct view to the television and the fireplace. So it feels really cozy and definitely a good place to kick back and relax. One of the things I really like is the 2000 watt pure sign inverter. It's a good brand, it's a good quality, it's something you rarely see in a gas coach. One thing I like is the storage bays on the slide out because they actually come out with the slide. They're still nice and spacious, but you're not bumping your head or scratching your back trying to get to your stuff. Nice, easy access. And on to the downsides, starting with the dash. I feel like it's a little dated and just needs some updates. Another downside here is the ventilation. Because there's a giant wall of cabinets, there's only one window and there's no vent in the ceiling, so I feel like ventilation and airflow is not gonna be that great here in the bedroom. One thing I'm not in love with is this kitchen sink. And it's because this faucet is a little bit too low, so it's gonna be a little bit difficult to wash dishes. If it was up here, that would be better. To recap, our faves are the living room layout, the 2000 watt pure sign wave inverter, and the slide out bays. And the downsides are the lack of ventilation in the bedroom, the dated dash, and the low faucet in the kitchen. Yep. So overall, this coach gets, I'm gonna give it- Three. Three thumbs three up? Three thumbs up, yes. Three yes, thumbs up. total. Okay, cool. So we had to jump to Giant RV in Montclair for this next coach. So let's go. Starting with our favorite features, I really like this U-shaped sofa area with the cool dinette table that can fold down up and even be wheeled out of the way. So I really dig dual purpose spaces and this RV does not disappoint because behind the TV, 
is a nice storage space. For those that like a little extra bang in the bedroom, this articulating bed allows you to actually sit up to watch television and adjust the firmness of the mattress. So on to the dislikes, starting with the driver's area. The dash, the steering wheel, everything kind of looks outdated. Looks like it needs to be brought up to more modern specs and look a little cleaner. I'm not very fond of some of the material choices like the linoleum floors, the carpet and the stairwell, and the very plasticky shower that was the same as their entry level coaches. So I feel like we've bumped up a price point and I expect some of my materials to be bumped up to that price point as well. And this just didn't quite hit it. So I'm not a big fan of the carpeted bays. They get dirty, they get dusty, they get wet, which tends to happen when you're camping, and they're just a real pain in the butt to clean. Overall, our three favorite features were the storage behind the TV, the great living and dinette area, and the articulating bed. And the downsides, the dated dash, the questionable material choices that are a little bit lower end, and carpeted bays. So overall, we give this coach... Mm -hmm. Two thumbs Two up. Thumbs up yeah. <laughs> we are here at the giant PDI center in Rancho Cucamonga for our very last RV. So the PDI center is a place where all the RVs go before they actually hit the dealership. So this one's so new, it's not even at the dealership and we're excited to check it out. Yeah, and show it to you. Yes. Starting off with our likes. The bay doors. I really like these. They're strong, they're sturdy, they're thick. They feel really good. They have this nice seal that keeps rain from falling into the bay. And as you can see, there's no carpet inside there. And they shut really nicely. If you don't know me, I am big on workstations. So when I saw this, I loved it. A great workspace and it's even got storage underneath. So I really like the opposing slides in this RV. It gives a huge space for the living area and kitchen, and there's a curbside dinette, which means when you're sitting here having dinner or working on the computer, you look out onto your lounge area versus having to look out, like most RVs, onto your neighbor. Moving on to our dislikes, I actually really like this dash. I just wish it had a workstation or some sort of a table here for the passenger. So another downside is the awning. Because of the location over the slide, it goes straight out, which means it's not gonna provide as much shade. And because it's over the slide, you have less area to hang out under your shade once it's out. One thing I don't really like is two sinks, which may look like a plus at first, but you're already in a small enough space as is in a motorhome, much less the fact that these are smaller than average sinks, normal RV size sink. I would have much rather have just had one larger sink that was a little bit more usable than a his and hers. So to wrap up our favorites on this coach, we have the pop-up desk in the bedroom, we have the opposing slides with the curbside dinette, and the very nice bay doors that shut and feel solid. Yes, and for our dislikes, it was the fact that there's no workstation up front in the passenger area, the awning that is over the slide, and the dual sinks in the bathroom. So. Overall, we're going to give this coach, um, I'm going two thumbs. I'm, I wish it was a little Teetering. bit smaller of a coach. There you have it. Three, three thumbs, thumbs up. Three thumbs for this one. Yeah. We've been all over California and we've spent a lot of time in each of these coaches. And there's some serious contenders in this segment, but the thumbs have spoken. So for us, it's the vacationer and the bounder that take the cake. Yeah. But that's just what works best for us. Which would you choose? Leave us your thoughts in the comments below and hope to see you on the road. See ya. That was fun.